Okay, we'll start off with the hook in the vise. With these clean combers, I like to angle them a little bit to start off <clears throat> so I don't have to contort my hands working uh, down that hook bend. And just work my thread down to the bottom. And I'm going to first tie in some crystal flash. And we'll use this for some ribbing. And now I usually like to tie in a, top, a hot spot on these. So what I've got here is some uh, UV eye stubbing. And that's what I use for this pattern. And, and I use it all different colors. But the hot spot is just going to be this the orange color. Just a little tiny bit. Okay, and I've got the hot spot in there. I'll switch over to the uh, the regular body color, which in this case is just going to be some black. And I'll dub that up to where the thorax is going to be. And then we'll leave about, oh, a third or so of the hook shank here. And then just rib the crystal flash up. And we'll just, the hook, to a more horizontal present, or orientation with the main part of the shank in the eye. And so that's the... Uh, the body so far. Okay, now the next part, we're just going to grab some dyed cow elk. So this is just some select cow elk. And again, to match whatever color we're going to tie, in this uh, case we're doing a kind of a black cicada slash beetle variation. These patterns are meant to really just imitate whatever, and they're not to uh, match the hatch style necessarily. It's more of a general. So we'll just... Uh, cut off a, a clump and then we'll prepare it, get rid of some of that under fur. Then I'll just go ahead and stack this right up. Now we're going to want to pull this out with the tips facing the direction we want to tie them in. Grab, pull it out there. And now I'll just measure, I want this to be roughly even with the back of the the bend of the hook there and so I want to place those right on top at that point switch hands and then just do a couple of loose wraps and then start to just yank that down and then just to secure that we'll use the old cheek cheech elk hair caddis trick and just pull up a few of the fibers at once and that really just locks them in. It helps it so that that clump doesn't rotate on you. And then we'll just pull these off and clip them. Now because all this is going to be hidden, that uh, doesn't need to be trimmed super tight and I'm actually just going to wrap right over that. Okay, now we're going to grab some foam. And the way I measure the, the foam is I will take uh, and just measure the distance between, when this is sitting horizontal like that, the distance between the hook point and the shank. That's going to be the width. And then the length, I usually just do two times the uh, shank, the straight shank length. So that's one, two. And then I'll usually just put a little cut in the end. The other thing you can do is, if you wanted to, you can use a a Chernobyl ant cutter, or one of the uh, uh, insect cutters that you have uh, that we also sell in the store. Okay, and then once we have that, <clears throat> the other thing I like to do sometimes, um, and you can use different types of foam. This is some Crosslink, <clears throat> but you can use the regular fly tying foam. Crosslink will, will probably float a little better, although it's a little bit more difficult to tie with. For me, it really just depends on the color. So what I like to do is pass this really quick, quickly th through a flame and then you can kind of mat that down a bit and it gives a little bit of a taper. And now to judge where I'm going to tie this in uh, what I'll do is I want my wing just about even a little bit shorter than the uh, elk fibers and I lay that on top and then I just 
push to make a little indentation of where the um, the eye would go through. Okay, once I've found the center of where that's going to be uh, go over the eye of the hook, I'm going to take some scissors and just poke a hole and kind of ream that out. You can use a bodkin too. And now I'm going to pull that over so that it's now on the shank of the hook. And now I'm just going to pinch that. And what I like to do is turn my vise horizontally like this and hold that. And then as the thread's dangling down, I just kind of pinch that foam together. And we'll give this a couple of wraps. And then I can place, make sure it's placed where I want it to be, and adjust it. And then you can tighten that up real good. That'll make it so it doesn't spin on you. And you can also set some super glue underneath there if you're tying these in some bigger sizes. The bigger sizes will be more inclined to spin than these would. Okay, once we've got that on there, <clears throat> we're going to put in our legs. And so these are just some barred orange rubber legs. And I'll usually measure them out to be a little bit longer than the body length. And we tie them both in at the same time here. And I like to tie them in just on this side with a couple of loose wraps. And then I can transfer this to the other side. Like so. I'm going to trim these. Then I'm going to grab some of the Parapost wing material, and this is a fluorescent orange. This stuff is super bright. I'll actually use this color on most uh, variations of this pattern. <clears throat> so I'm just going to get one strand of that, tie it in right on top. Again, just kind of a couple wraps, snug it down, and then just trim it. I usually like to trim the front little piece like so, and then however high I want this one to be, usually about even with the foam on the back. And now I just uh, seat those legs a little better and trim them. Like that. And then I'll take some super glue and I like to just stick a little bit on the bottom here just to tie everything in place. And that's our Muda Puda.